It's an endangered species. There are only four airlines in the world that still fly it, and you've probably never heard of three of them. It's the Quadjet Airbus A340-600, and it almost didn't survive COVID. Virgin Atlantic scrapped it completely, but Lufthansa brought it back from the dead, and you best believe we're going to check it out because it's only a matter of time before it finally goes extinct. You know, ordered this like, $20 Lufthansa hoodie off of Alibaba. Today, we're going to establish residence in seat 54 kilo of Delta Alpha India Hotel uniform for an eight-hour overnight flight from Charlotte, North Carolina to Munich, Germany. Let's see what the German flag carrier has to offer on this unique route served by an increasingly rare bird. To Charlotte, it's a steamy day in uh, midsummer, and today is a pretty special day actually. Uh, I'm pumped to pumped to uh, take you guys along with me for it. We're actually flying uh, Lufthansa for the first time, flying the, uh, the A340-600, the sort of stretch version. And we're gonna try something different today. We actually you know, ordered this uh, $20 Lufthansa hoodie off of Alibaba. Um, it is the cheapest material I've ever encountered. Very scratchy and uncomfortable, but. We're gonna to try to demonstrate our passion for the Lufthansa brand and see if we can uh, see if we can get the ticketing agents to uh, potentially help us out, maybe upgrade us. So we'll see. <laughs> yep, you heard that right. We're flying the economy, but that doesn't mean we can't ask for an upgrade, especially on this flight that's likely to have a few empty seats. Sometimes airlines will let you upgrade at check-in or at the gate for a fraction of what it would cost to book online ahead of time. Now, obviously it depends on the airline, but I typically set the bar around 500 bucks one way. <laughs> now, it's no secret that Lufthansa's business class is in need of a facelift, and these seats notoriously lack privacy and personal space. That said, it is worth something for the lie flat bed and upgraded food and drink. So we'll see what they quote us. It'll be a game time decision. Actually, it's closer to 4 p.m. Flight departs at 6.30. I think the check-in desk opened at 3.30, so three hours ahead of the flight. The flight didn't look very packed based on the seat map, so I'm really hoping we get like a road to ourselves. That'd be sick. Uh, we're slumming it in the back today in economy, uh, and I couldn't be more excited. All right, good first impression. The line is quite short. And, uh, you know, full A340, it's got to seat like 250 plus passengers. So if we had a full flight and it was, I think, closer to the time of departure, this would be, this line would be more packed. So yeah, not sure what happened there, but I was approached and told I had to put away my phone. I was only filming myself for funsies and not disrupting any of the airport operations. So not sure why they were making a big stink, but I decided it wasn't worth arguing and just put the phone away for the time being. Check-in otherwise went smoothly, and although there were no upgrade deals to be had, I did confirm that the flight was only 65% full, so I was assuming I'd at least have an open seat next to me. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on the ground experience here at CLT because there's not really anything you get with your economy class ticket. Lufthansa flies out of the D concourse, specifically gate D12. On your way from security to this gate, you'll find a solid number of food and drink options suitable for all diets, from fried chicken at Bojangles, it's bow time. <laughs> the salads and Greek yogurt at the Chow Gourmet Market. Today was a particularly hectic day at CLT as we got hammered by storms the day prior. And I just grabbed a couple bites from the deep concourse here and the line for the American Airlines customer service desk, this is insane. I've never seen it like this before in my life. Like it's extending almost all the way down the deep concourse. I mean, check this out. <laughs> All around, there's evidence of delays and just various flight debacles that people are having. Um, honestly, I've never seen morale so low in an airport before. I'm wishing everyone the best in terms of getting to their respective destinations. Now, luckily, we were spared from the American Airlines nightmare, and even though our inbound flight was slightly delayed, it was still due to arrive around 5 p.m. Eastern, which would give Lufthansa 1.5 hours to turn the thing around if we were going to depart on time. And there she is, a Delta Alpha India hotel uniform. The 15-year-old A340-600 originally delivered to Lufthansa in 2008. It's crazy how Americans' 777-200s are all 20-plus years old, but will probably be flying far longer than the A340, just due to their economics. Uh-oh. 
All right, departure time just got pushed. Well, boarding time just got pushed another 15. It's now 6.30 boarding time. They think they can board this thing in 20 minutes, which is either really ambitious or it means the plane is absolutely empty. So we'll figure out which one it is. <laughs> yeah, it was most certainly the latter. But I also didn't realize how quickly certain airlines can board planes. One of you told me on Instagram that Japan Airlines boarded an all economy 747 in 20 minutes. That's absolutely nuts. Boarding ultimately commenced around 6.45 p.m., starting with first and business class, as well as Lufthansa Elites and Star Alliance Gold. We're bringing up the rear in Group 4 today as we're flying economy, and I personally don't have any status through Lufthansa or Star Alliance. Thanks so much. Awesome, thank you. Alright, excitement is real, folks. Go ahead. <laughs> Hi, oh. how are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Do you, do you guys mind if I take pictures of the seat, not okay. people, obviously? Yeah, go ahead. I appreciate it, thank okay. you. <laughs> so turning right here, we find the second of two business class cabins. This plane has 56 business class seats arranged in a 222 layout. This cabin was designed by London-based Pearson Lloyd and debuted in the 747-8 in 2012. But innovation in premium cabins has been rapid, and by 2017, Lufthansa already had big plans to introduce a new seat on their 777-9s. It's called Allegris. <laughs> now, as you know, the 777-9 still isn't in service, so this initiative got delayed. But it looks like Lufthansa is finally going to start rolling this thing out uh, later this year on other planes. Uh, back on the A340, our next stop en route to 54 kilos, the premium economy cabin, seats 28 in a 232 configuration. <laughs> I was quoted around 500 bucks to upgrade to this cabin, which I declined. <laughs> Upon reaching the back of the economy cabin and settling into my seat, I remembered why I love flying economy, and the main reason is the people. The economy cabin is where you find the real ones, and I'm talking the mother and her son traveling to see family in Romania for the first time since COVID. I'm talking the solo travelers in their 20s who bought a one-way ticket to Bali to see how far they could stretch their savings in Southeast Asia. I'm talking the honeymooners who wanted to splurge on the destination and save on the flight. Just a really good crowd all around. And the other two things that can make economy attractive are one, its affordability, and two, the potential for a more comfortable slash premium feeling experience if the flight isn't full. <laughs> Luckily, it appeared all these criteria were going to be met on LH 429. I was pretty stoked for the flight. I guess one of my main questions is, what are the average like load factors on this route, and how do they justify keeping this route in existence? Because I don't envision them being able to fill a 280 seat A340 on a regular basis, um, and it is the supposedly peak summer travel season. It could just be an anomaly. Um, but the airport is packed on a Sunday. I think Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays, typically the busiest days. People trying to either kick off or finish a vacation. But it seems a little suspect how empty this flight is. Tornes Handgepäcks auf den Platz unter den Vordersitzen. Schließen Sie jetzt Ihren Sicherheitsgurt und ziehen Sie ihn fest. Um sich wieder loszuschnallen, brauchen Sie den Verschluss des Gurtes nur anzuheben. Da Turbulenzen auftreten können, sind Sie verpflichtet, sich anzuschnallen, sobald Sie Ihren Sitzplatz all right, as we commence our ridiculously short taxi over the runway 18 left, let's check out the route for this evening. We'll be departing to the south, making a big old left turn northeast bound, then pretty much following the eastern coast until we can't no more. We'll make landfall over Ireland, then cross almost directly over London and Brussels before descending into Bavaria. Flight time will be roughly 7 hours and 45 minutes, at a cruising altitude of 37 and 39,000 feet. Can a crew prepare for departure? incredible sunset departure. 
I know A340s are typically a little slower to get off the ground. With our light load tonight, this takeoff felt like a rocket ship. Hey, I got a confession. Been losing all momentum. But just because it's easy. But that don't make it better. Once we reached 10,000 feet, it wasn't long until the cabin crew sprung into action. The first delivery to seat 54 kilo was a bottle of water. Then, the gifts just kept on coming. Next up was a bag of crackers. Crackers with salt. Would I have preferred protein or fat to kick off my meal? Absolutely. But was I expecting any sort of appetizer in economy class? No. So I ain't complaining. Chicken with rice, kabao chicken, or pasta with cheese sauce? Uh, can you do the chicken with rice, please? What's the more popular option tonight? Is it the chicken uh, or the pasta? <laughs> it's the chicken most tonight. Okay. Sometimes it's yeah. really to turn around. I hear you. Is that what you would go with? Is the chicken or you would go with the pasta? I hear you. Yep. Alright, let's see what we're working with. We got crackers and cheese, a uh, quinoa salad, a little dinner roll, the main course, and some sort of cake. Oh, and real metal cutlery. All right, the big reveal, here we go. We're gonna pop off the foil and see what it looks like. I doubt it's gonna be visually appealing, but it could taste good. Dang, looks pretty good. Let's dig in. Carrot's perfect, it's like a steamed carrot. No, no sauce in the carrot, very simple, very basic. Just awesome. Well done, Luke done. So the rice has got some sort of like cheesiness to it. Maybe it's just butter. <laughs> now, just to set expectations appropriately, this wasn't a restaurant quality meal by any means, but it was slightly better than the frozen dinner. And I was famished, so most anything would have tasted good at this point, I think. The quinoa salad was pretty legit, though. Very smooth. Feels like EVOO. And I say replace those in your cooking and the food you eat in the Middle Isles with extra virgin olive oil. <laughs> Any health benefit I received from choosing the chicken over the pasta was quickly reversed by this glass of wine. As many of you know, I typically avoid alcohol and red eyes, but I'm also a sucker for red wine, regardless of the quality. <laughs> and here comes the ultimate palate cleanser, a little bar of chocolate. A small gesture, but much appreciated. I stashed it for later. We had more important things to do before hitting the sack, including checking out the Wi-Fi and then the IFE situation. Wi-Fi is gonna run you 25 euros, 200 yuan, or $27 for the entire flight. Uh, speeds were sufficient for sending, receiving emails, and also browsing FlightAware, but streaming would have been tough. Uh, the Seatback Entertainment System had a decent selection of movies, TV shows, music, games, podcasts, audiobooks, and more. And, of course, the best form of entertainment, which is the moving map. But the hardware was clearly old, and I almost broke my finger trying to get the system to respond. Good news is, if you bring your own devices, you should be set from a charging perspective. There's a USB charger on the IFE screen and, and an AC outlet underneath the seat. So update, I've come to the realization that if we have any hope of surviving our first day in Tel Aviv, we're probably going to want to get some sleep because it's already 3.05 a.m. Munich time, I think 4.05 a.m. Tel Aviv time. So I'm just going to try to catch a little bit of this movie and then crash, try to get some shut-eye. Um, but uh, I haven't checked out the seat recline yet. I assume it's going to be very modest, not expecting anything big in terms of REM or um, slow wave sleep this evening, but you gotta, you gotta at least give it a good old-fashioned try. Uh, to aid in our sleep efforts, uh, Lufthansa has generously provided us with a, a pillow. It doesn't have a ton of fluff to it, but you don't need to overdo it necessarily. Got a nice Lufthansa tag on there. I don't know if you guys can see it. And then we've got a blanket called Relax and Sleep. Plenty of blankets to go around too, since there are so many empty seats, so we will not be cold this evening, that's for sure. So at this point, I was eyeing the row across from me for a potential lie flat situation, since it was entirely empty. But first, we had the brush of the teeth, so time for a trip to the loo. And this is where we encounter perhaps the most fantastic quirk about this plane. Yep, that's right. The economy class lavatories are downstairs. There are five of them down here by my count, and they're all really spacious. Look at all this counter space too. You can lay out an entire toiletries bag here. It's like a hotel. <laughs> all right, potentially a bit of an exaggeration, but there was a lot of counter space. Toothbrushing session brought to you, brought to you by Colgate Optic White and 
Philips Sonicare, not sponsored. It's honestly a game changer to bring your own toothbrush, toothpaste, and mouthwash, so I'd highly recommend, especially if you aren't getting an amenity kit. All right, time to attempt to get some shut eye. But first, one of the flight attendants just came by, hooked me up with a little um, reusable little mug and a amenity kit. He saw I was filming and uh, hit me up with something special. Wow, talk about really going out of his way, improve my flight. Mark, what a guy. Pretty accurate assessment. Breakfast consisted of a muffin and a small cup of fruit. I skipped it given there was zero protein on offer and I figured I'd have time to hit one of the priority pass lounges at Munich for a more proper breakfast. Do you guys have any uh, decaf tea by any chance? Or, uh, or decaf coffee? We have decaf coffee. Uh, we have chamomile tea. That sounds great. If you guys have. Yeah, all pennies. Thank you. It's a chamomile. So for those of you who are curious, I'm skipping the coffee on board for two reasons. One, apparently it's healthier to delay caffeine intake until 90 minutes after waking. And again, I recommend delaying your caffeine intake to 90 to 120 minutes after waking, unless you are using that caffeine to really jolt your system before a workout. And two, I know I'll be able to get a better coffee on the ground, ideally an espresso drink in the lounge. Well, I sipped my chamomile, I was glued to flight aware, the moving map, and of course the window to track our approach into Munich. Winds were out of the west, so we'd be using runway 26 right this morning. Munich airport is one of my favorite in the world, and I was kind of sad I wouldn't have more time there. In addition to being modern, clean, and well-designed, it's a bit of a destination itself, offering a dizzying array of food, shopping, and entertainment. Plus, of course, the planes. As a Lufthansa and Star Alliance hub, this place is jam-packed with wide bodies. A true Avgeek paradise. So the excitement was real. Let's get this A340 on the ground. Overall, a very pleasant flight on Lufthansa. The hard product was spot on. The seat was comfortable and spacious for economy class. Recline and legroom were adequate and there was plenty of options to stay productive and or entertained if you didn't want to sleep. Speaking of sleep, the cabin conditions were pretty ideal in my opinion. Uh, lights went out soon after dinner. The flight itself was about 65% full, so I had the seat open next to me. And the cabin temperature was kept fairly cool, something I did not expect on a European carrier. Bye, so. Bye. 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 And the crew, well, the, the crew was outstanding, especially Mark, who saw I was taking pictures and went out of his way to grab me some extra amenities from business class. Food was solid for economy class in my view, although the breakfast option was subpar. But little touches like a chocolate after dinner and even a hot towel service in the morning made it feel a little more upscale. <laughs> and of course, from an AvGeek perspective, the AFG 40 is a special experience because of not only its striking design, but also its increasing rarity. Lufthansa is one of the last remaining major commercial carriers to operate the A340. It's a beautiful cabin. Thank you. 
Okay. It's unclear how long they'll last once Lufthansa takes delivery of its remaining A350s, 787s, and eventually the 777X. <laughs> for the time being though, it's still being leveraged for its range and its premium heavy configuration. So go check it out while you still can. Ended up being a really solid flight by Lutonsa. Uh,